My name is Andrew Marinus, and my new book is Singled Out. It's a biography of Glenn Burke, who was the first openly gay Major League Baseball player. He's also the inventor of the High Five, and I tell his story in the context of the gay rights movement in the United States. So there's a moment in game one of the 1977 World Series that I think really symbolizes so much of Glenn's life. He His first World Series appearance. Comes up to bat as a rookie starting in the World Series with the runner on base. Glenn Burke now up with two out and Steve Garvey at first base. Comes through with a base hit that should have scored uh, a run, yet the umpire makes a bad call. Oh, yeah. and it robs Glenn of this RBI and this moment of history in the World Series. And I think that uh, Glenn was also robbed of his Major League Baseball career by an injustice, the injustice of homophobia. Glenn Burke isn't important just because he was the first openly gay Major League Baseball player. He was a good baseball player, period. He was a fast runner, he had a strong arm, he was a good hitter, he hit over 300, I think five years straight in the minor leagues. And there was a coach with the Dodgers who said he had the potential to be the next Willie Mays. It wasn't the players, it wasn't his teammates that when they found out he was gay that didn't want him around. It was the management, the general manager and the manager of the team. When I interviewed his former major and minor league teammates, they all talked to me about how much they loved having him around. He was also the most fun-loving guy on the team. He was funny, he could sing, he could dance. Uh, his teammates loved him. So he was a player with a lot of promise before he was run out of the game. One of the most interesting aspects of researching this book was seeing how Glenn Burke's life fit into the larger context of the gay rights movement and the backlash to that movement in American history. He comes along as a young man um, around the time of the Stonewall riots is when he's starting his career in the minor leagues. Um, while he's breaking into the Dodgers, you see people like Anita Bryant launching national campaigns against gay rights as he's moving to San Francisco around the time that Harvey Milk is becoming a well-known and powerful politician in San Francisco. He's there in the Castro when Milk is assassinated. Glenn Burke is credited with inventing the high five. And the story goes that it was the last series of the season for the Dodgers in 1977. They had already had three players on the team hit 30 home runs that season. Dusty Baker had 29. And if he were to hit one more home run in this last homestand against the Houston Astros, the Dodgers would become the first team in Major League history to have four players with 30 or more homers. And so in his next to last at bat of the game, Dusty finally hit his 30th home run. Glenn Burke was on deck as Dusty crossed home plate. Glenn Burke came running over to celebrate, congratulate him, raised his arm like this, and Dusty slapped it. And there was a picture taken, and that is considered the first high five ever. With all my books, I hope that they're interesting, whether uh, the readers are interested in sports or not. My books are not focused on statistics or scores of games, but on people. Glenn Burke lived a fascinating, uh, heroic, and tragic life that I think will appeal uh, both to the baseball fans out there and to those who are just interested in, in biographies of interesting people. With Singled Out, I felt like I had a chance to continue a theme that I've been developing my books is using sports as a hook to talk about history and social justice. One reason I write for young adults is because I think that's the age group where you have the chance to make the biggest impact. Not only to impact young people to become lifelong readers and, and writers, but also to help shape the future of this country. I mean, I write books about sports and history and social justice so that those social justice messages will come through the most and hopefully inspire uh, young people or support them uh, to make change. For me, one of my favorite parts of being an author is having a chance to visit schools and to talk about my books with students and teachers and librarians. So when I visit a school, I typically talk about my own roots as a writer, going back to when I was in middle school and created my first sports magazine, uh, how I wrote my first book, where I got the idea from, what the research and interviewing process is like for any of my books, and then walk through the story of my current book. I love interacting with readers. If anyone has any questions or, or comments on the book, uh, please re reach out and I'll definitely respond.